Welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to pivot a dart around a basic bodice block in Clo 3D. Dart manipulation is a key technique in traditional flat patterning. Once a basic bodice block is drafted, the waist dart can be rotated to any other location around the parameter of the pattern and the fit will remain the same. Check out my Patreon in the description below for the project files used in this tutorial, as well as a written step-by-step -step guide, project ideas, and one-on-one -on -one support for advancing your skills. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is download the project file, which you can find in my Patreon in the link in the description. Once you have that downloaded and saved to a place that you can find on your computer, you're going to go to File, Open, Project, Find the folder on your computer, and then double click Dart Manipulation Project. Here you can see I've created a file already that has a basic block pattern. I've also assigned a texture to this pattern so you can see the striped pattern and the grain line on the 3D garment as well as the 2D pattern. And I've also added notches around this pattern for guides for uh, different places that you can put the dart. Of course you can put darts anywhere but I thought I'd give you just some guides to get started. If you have just drafted this pattern either through tracing or using the 3D pen, you might have darts, but Clo 3D doesn't recognize that you have darts until you true them. And to true the darts, you're going to use the edit pattern tool or the Z tool, and that's this tool right here. And this is the only tool we're going to use, by the way, in this entire tutorial, which is very convenient. But what we're gonna do is, with the edit pattern tool, you're just going to hold shift and then click both of these dart legs on the front pattern and that will select both of them and you know that they'll be selected because they're both yellow now. And with them selected, you're going to right click and choose shape dart cap. And with shape dart cap, it's just giving a smooth line along the bottom of the pattern here once the dart is sewn together. And you can move these, these little curve points by just clicking and dragging them. But in general, the, the shape that they are giving you is usually pretty good. So with shape dart cap, you can just hit enter on your keyboard and it'll go ahead and shape that. And once it's shaped, you can see that it's given you these baselines and uh, what the dart would look like when it come, kind of, uh, I guess the seam allowances, what lines they'll follow. And uh, then when you can actually cl click the dart and it'll select it at the same time. So now Clo 3D knows that this is a dart. And with that dart selected now, again, we still have the edit pattern tool. You're going to right click and then choose rotate dart. And now the first this is a multi-step process and it's all kind of wrapped into the same thing and it automatically leads you to this next step. So the first step, it says click on a segment to draw new dart location. So where do you want the new dart to be? And I'm going to choose this uh, notch right here on the side seam. I'm just going to click there. And now it's given me another step. It says click on a guideline to rotate the center point. So what this is saying is what is going to be the new direction of the dart? And it can be, you know, it can shoot up towards the neckline. It can kind of be around here. It can go any place along this guideline that you want it to. But we're going to, for the sake of this tutorial, just keep it exactly at the same point that the previous dart was. So we'll go ahead and click there. And now it says select side to rotate and the two options you can see the one is you know the majority of the pattern and then the other option is just this chunk right here. And when choosing a side to rotate it doesn't really matter but if you want to maintain the grain line to be parallel to either center front or center back choose the piece that doesn't include the base neck point on along the center front or center back. So in that case that's this piece right here. So I'm going to select that side by clicking it and then it'll allow me to rotate it along that pivot point. And for right now let's just go ahead and close, close that entire dart. So with it as far over and close as I can, I'm just going to click again. Okay, now it's giving you one more step and that is to choose the dart length. And I want the dart to be the same length as the previous one. I want it to hit the same pivot point, so I'm just going to drag it all the way up and then click. And then it moves the dart. 
I'm going to go ahead and simulate that so we can see what it looks like in the 3D space. And there it is. You can see how the grain lines have shifted to accommodate this new dart location. Now I'm just going to show you how to do uh, add a little bit more fine tuning into your dart manipulation. I really like to work with specific numbers when I pattern. So this next uh, part, I'll show you a few different techniques that you can use to be more specific with your measurements. Our goal with the back dart is to create an additional shoulder dart while still maintaining the waist dart. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the same steps that we did to true the front dart. We're going to right click shape dart cat and then just press enter and now we have our baselines there. We can go ahead and right click rotate dart and I'm going to click on this notch in the shoulder seam and this time instead of making the dart go all the way down to the same point. I actually want this line to be pretty perpendicular to the shoulder seam. So I'm looking at this gray line here. That's going to be the direction of the dart. And I think right about there looks good. I've just clicked. Select side to rotate. Again, we're just choosing the side that is not connected to center back so we can maintain that grain line. And then while this side is selected and I can just move it around and rotate, rather than just kind of willy-nilly clicking anywhere, I'm going to go ahead and right click and that will open this window called dart width. And now I can choose how wide I want that closed dart to be, which is the one that I'm closing, or the open dart. And I, I actually like my, uh, I think that I want my shoulder dart to be 0.25 inches. So I'm just gonna type that in and click OK. And it says, great. And now I can choose how long that dart can be. And right, you know, I could just click anywhere or in the same line, I can go ahead and right click. And I want that dart to be three inches long and then click OK. So I was able to choose all of those measurements specifically exactly how I wanted them. And I didn't have to kind of just guess around with those measurements. I want to show you one last thing, which is the edit dart. And again, this is all with the Z tool or edit pattern tool selected. Just go ahead and right click this back dart again and choose edit dart. And here you can uh, change what oh, they're calling them dart arms. That's really funny. You can change the width of the dart. You can change the length of the dart. Uh, for example, I think I'm actually going to make this dart an inch uh, further away from the apex of the shoulder blade. So I'm going to type uh, 8.6 inches and choose OK. And then it, it's going to give you the option to uh, smooth out that cap again. So just press enter. And then it just trued it and made it shorter at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate. All right, that is the basis of dart ma manipulation in Clo 3D. Essentially, you can move these darts at any point around the exterior of the pattern and the fit of the bodice will remain the same. I recommend trying it out and practicing by trying to move the dart in any combination of amount of darts around the parameter of the pattern. I've added, again, some these notches here that you can try. Um, also, just a quick note, the more darts that you use, the smoother the pattern will fall around the body. That's why adding this shoulder dart in addition to the waist dart creates a smoother line in the back. All right. Thanks for watching.